Do you know the road I've been walking? Do you know the trials I've faced? Greetings. My name is Ian Vargo, and I'm with theproaudiofiles.com, and today's topic is going to be reverb and delay. It's a very deep topic. Uh, you can do a lot of things with these effects, including create a sense of space, a sense of depth, lushness, warmth. Uh, you can even make a song sound like it's from a different era using these effects. You can also do a lot of negative things with reverb and delay. You have to consider the source material. If your piano is out of tune or your lead vocal isn't a great performance, uh, basically you're just creating many, many repeats of the original signal and therefore multiplying the problem. Another thing to consider is the tempo of the song. In this case, we've got 124, which is pretty slow. And another thing to consider is the style of music. In this case, we've got a ballad, which lends itself to reverb and delay. If you have a punk rock tune at 180 BPM with crunchy guitars, a screaming lead singer, you might not want to use uh, big reverbs with eight second tails. But in this case, it works. So I'm going to go ahead and play the beginning of the song. This is Bad Choices Bait by the band Goose and Fox. Check it out. Do you know the road I've been walking? Do you know the trials I've faced? So as you can see, uh, this lead vocal right here is being sent to uh, multiple different aux tracks with reverb and delay on each of them. So things get confusing really quickly if you are not organized. Um, I feel sort of confused right now, but let, let's start by listening to the lead vocal, and I'm going to mute any reverb or delay effects on it. Do you know the road I've been walking? Now let's bring it in. Do you know the trials I've fared? Okay, a thing to consider is that on this lead vocal, um, before any reverb or delay, we've got EQ, compression, a little bit of distortion, more EQ, some de-essing, and even more compression. So all of these effects are being applied before we've got these sends. Now it gets really complex here. So we've got the lead vocal alley, which is being sent through this bus called reverb, which is arriving at this aux track which has the input set to reverb, and the name of the track is also called reverb. Um, and on that track, we've got Altiverb with a EMT 140 plate. This is an impulse response based reverb, and it's really great. Um, and after this effect, we've got a high pass filter and a little bit of compression to make the reverb really sound more even and aggressive. Um, after that, this reverb track, the output is set to verb bus. So from verb bus, we are arriving at this track called verb bus, as you can see, and then hitting the main output only after another EQ, which boosts a little bit of high end. So most of my reverb and delay here uh, is going through verb bus with a little bit of high EQ added, okay? Um, after that, We've got what is called alley delay. This is the send right here, sent via this bus, arriving here at alley delay. And on this track, we've got echo boy. This is where it gets even more confusing. Out of alley delay, we are going via plate to another reverb. So essentially, we have the lead vocal being sent to a delay and that delay being sent to a reverb. Um, once again, we've got a plate setting here, uh, and then after that, we have a high pass filter and a little bit of a high boost, and then out of that, going to verb bus, okay? So 
things can get pretty confusing pretty quickly if you don't keep track of your, your naming system and color coding and everything. Um, this lead vocal is also simply going to this plate reverb right here and what is called lush verb, which is um, right here. We've got this Valhalla Room, which is a really wonderful plugin. Um, and then after that plugin, we've got a little bit of a low pass filter going on. So reverb through delay, delay through reverb. Um, and if that weren't confusing enough, many of the other parts of the song, including the drums, tambourine, backup vocals, uh, more backup vocals, strings, uh, guitars are also all going through some of these reverbs at different levels. Uh, and I did all of these things to taste. It took a long time. Um, but what ends up happening is you have a sense of, of cohesion, okay? So let's take a listen. Let's go forward to the second verse and listen to what it would sound like without these reverb and delays. Of a terrible And the vocal sounds pretty uh, naked and bare and doesn't really fit with the genre of music. But once we add these reverbs right here, it's a whole different song. Let's go forward to the chorus. So to make things easier for you, um, what I would do is after you are happy with your reverb and delay uh, sends and settings and such, what I would do is I would simply come out of this verb bus track and create a verb print because I would rather focus on one stereo audio track than four or five different aux tracks, all with complex and uh, very taxing plugins on each of them. So if you have any questions, let me know. This has been Ian Vargo with the Pro Audio Files. You can reach me at ianvargo at gmail.com. Make sure to check out Bad Choices Bait by Goose and Fox on iTunes. Thank you. Do you know the road I've been walking? Do you know the trials I've faced?